Ambiya and the word Ambiya means prophets. And the surah is named prophets because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions 16 prophets in the surah. And it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes in depth in the stories of a couple of prophets and mentions different incidents from a different couple of prophets. So this surah Ambiya, it's a Makki surah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the regular themes of Makki surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Risala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about his tawheed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings some stories and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings uh, the um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the skies and uh, and uh, opens up the skies to send down rain upon this barren land. How the land and the sky they were just you know like they were they were dead and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought life to them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Risala when he speaks to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالِمِينَ Speaking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu job and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi qualities and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the stories of the Prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the stories of Ibrahim alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes in depth in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam He brings the story of Lut alayhi salam He brings the story of Nuh alayhi salam Dawood alayhi salam Suleiman alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of Zakaria alayhi salam Ayyub alayhi salam Yunus alayhi salam Ismail alayhi salam Ishaq alayhi salam Yaqub alayhi salam Zal al kifl and Hadith alayhi salatu wa salam The Prophet alayhi salam And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also brings mention about Maryam alayhi salam So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights Ibrahim alayhi salam's story and referring to the story of when Ibrahim alayhi salam destroyed the idols. We know the story when Ibrahim alayhi salam was a young kid, he was only like, uh, one of the narrations say he was about seven to ten years old when he, he went to, uh, while all the people were away, he went and he destroyed the idols. And then he, uh, when the people came back and they saw all their uh, quote unquote <coughs> lords were destroyed, they were, uh, they were confused like, oh, who would do this? And then they said that, oh, maybe it might be Ibrahim because he's always talking against the idols. So then they called Ibrahim and then they said, Man fa'ala hada bi ariyatina ya Ibrahim. He said, oh Ibrahim, did you do this to our lords? And Ibrahim said, he had left the biggest idol with the axe on his shoulder. So then he told them, he's like, why don't you ask the idol? The idol with the axe on his shoulder, why don't you ask him? If he were able to speak, he would give you a reply. And then the people felt dumbfounded. They were like, oh, you know. The idols can't speak. You know the idols can't speak. Why are you asking us? And then they uh, they started talking amongst each other like, oh, you know, like this is this is wrong. Like, you know, we're worshiping these idols, but they can't talk. They can't do anything. And then ov obviously they had such filth in their hearts that they said, you know what? How could he do this to our idols that we hold to such high standards? And they burned him. They threw him. They decided to throw him in the fire. They said that the fire was so big that they, they, uh, they started kindling the fire for 30 to 40 days. It was so big that if a bird were to fly over, the bird would get, the bird would just die flying over the fire. And they said that this fire was so big that they couldn't even go close to the fire to throw Ibrahim Asalaam inside. They had to use a catapult to throw him inside. And then when Ibrahim, a beautiful part about the story is when Ibrahim Asalaam, when they were getting ready to throw him in the fire, um, the different angels started coming to him. The angel of fire came to him. He said, you know, I'm the angel of fire. I can... Uh, I can stop this fire from harming you. He said, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send you? And the angel of fire would say, no. And then he said that, I'm only depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Different angels came to him and then Ibrahim just kept saying, I'm only depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then finally when they threw him into the fire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to that fire to cool down that fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh fire become cold and peaceful for Ibrahim alayhi salam. It is said that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had just said kuni barda without saying peace, and then the fire would have been so cold that it would have frozen to death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, become cold and become a source of peace for Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam had mentioned that that time in the fire was the best time, in the, was one of the most peaceful times of his life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it so peaceful for him. He spent 40 days inside that fire. So then this is one story of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to mention Dawood alayhi salam's story. The story of Dawood and Sulaiman when there when a ruling came up when uh, there was there was two um, there were, there was two two tribes and the cattle from one tribe went into the cattle of a different tribe. So now the, the they came arguing to Dawood and Sulaiman saying this and this happened. And then long story short, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he uh, he had given Dawood and Sulaiman the the hikmah and he had given Sulaiman and the hikmah also. So Dawood and Sulaiman when this matter came to him he answered right away. And then Sulaiman said that. You know, later on when the people were leaving, Sulaiman said that you know this could also work. 
So then he gave a different hukum and then that, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he shows us how Suleiman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Suleiman al the hikmah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the different favors he had blessed uh, Dawud bin Suleiman with how Suleiman alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the kingdom of the whole world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the kingdom of the whole world. And then the next sequence is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in a very beautiful sequence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions three prophets who are going through distress and who are going through troubles and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions their dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered right away so we have first the story of Yus- Yunus <coughs> a very famous story Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions <laughs> Allah says that Yunus he had left his nation and uh, uh, he, he, was on, he was on a boat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Yunus wasn't supposed to leave without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Yunus salam by putting him through three darknesses the darkness of the night the darkness in the water and the darkness of the whale that he was swallowed by Yunus salam was in this whale and he was constantly saying the dua la ilaha illa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from that test and the next, the next sequence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, the struggle of Ayyub Aysam. Ayyub Aysam was one of the prophets that went through some of the most struggles. He had lost his kids. He had set, at, a, at an old age, he had, gave, he had leprosy. So his skin was uh, his skin was melting off his body. So he was going through so much uh, so much difficulty. However, just like uh, Hafiz Zubair mentioned yesterday, when the, when we're making dua, we show our weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Ayyub Aysam was making dua, it's very beautiful. What he said was, Rabbi anni masani ad the word must in the Arabic language means the lightest touch possible. It could be a tap, it could be very light touch. And he, were going through so much difficulties, said that this, this difficulty I'm going through is a very light difficulty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All he said was he showed his weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this light difficulty has touched me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his answered his dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed him from this difficulty. And the next dua is the dua that Zubair, Hafiz Zubair mentioned yesterday as well, the dua of Zakariya alayhi salam. When he called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi la tadarni farda wa anta khayr wa anta ahkam al hakimin. He said that, oh Allah, uh, oh, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have, um, he, he, when, when he reached the old age, he, had, he hadn't had a son. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him a son and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him and gave him a son as well. We see these three, in this sequence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions three prophets with their du'as and their answers right away. It's a very beautiful sequence. And at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this, uh, brings a theme of risala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the one point I want to I highlight today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah SWT tells the Prophet وسلم, that the Prophet وسلم, was sent as a mercy to this whole mankind. To this whole to all the universes, the Prophet وسلم, was sent as a mercy. And we know from the qualities in the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, how much of a mercy he was. Regardless of how much the Prophet وسلم, went through, all the difficulties the Prophet وسلم, went through, there's two ends of the spectrum what the Prophet وسلم, brought a balance to. There was one end of the spectrum where the Prophet Sallallahu was going through so much difficulty. He wouldn't sleep at night. The Prophet Sallallahu would spend all night crying at night to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with so much fikr, with so much, with so much love, and uh, with so much worry in his heart for this ummah. And then there was on the other side of the spectrum where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. He was known to be daim al bishr. He was always peaceful to be around. The, one of the qualities is mentioned about him. He was that. Kana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fakman mufakhman. He was a person that. He would be smiling and happy himself and he would make everybody around him also feel happy and be able to smile around him as well. Regardless of everything the Prophet was going through, was going through he found this balance. My dear respected brothers, we can take a lesson from this, from this ayah Allah SWT that I sent down about the Prophet <laughs> The Prophet obviously we can never reach the level of the Prophet but my dear respected brothers, we can take this one quality of the Prophet ﷺ being a mercy for everybody around him. We can be those people that when people are around us, they feel happy, they feel at peace, they don't feel constricted, they don't feel like they, they don't feel they don't feel unwelcome. We should be those people that everybody is welcome around us. That when we speak to people, we make everybody happy. That regardless of everything we're going through, we can still make another person happy. The Prophet ﷺ, regardless of everything he was going through, whenever the Sahaba <coughs> would sit around him, they would always feel, they would always feel at ease, they would always feel comfort. Just like that, my dear respected brothers, we should be those people that when people come around us, when people speak to 
to us, they feel ease and they feel a comfort. Inshallah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to embody this quality into our lives Amen. and be a means of comfort to everybody, inshallah.